So uh, we learned about uh, freestyle and now I want you to understand why backstroke is so easy and what happens to people and uh, why is backstroke sometimes better than freestyle and why sometimes freestyle is better than backstroke. So let's talk about what we learned uh, in freestyle. We learned that when you want to, um, when you want to breathe in freestyle, you have to put the hand according to your pain. It means lift your hand, you remember, lift your hand like this, according to your pain and a little bit less, a little bit less. That's your breathing position in freestyle, which means it's the same thing in backstroke. So, I, come here for a second. Brian, Brian, okay, I'll stand here. Okay, and lift this hand, the right hand, until you feel pressure to the side, until you feel pressure in your shoulders, just a little bit. Okay, you can a little bit more, a little bit more, you have a little bit more. Okay, stop, stop. You feel the pain, he, he has pain here. So in freestyle, you have to um, stretch a little bit deep, but in backstroke, mm -hmm. it sort of looks funny, but probably, Brian, you need to, to do like this. You have to swim very to the side. What's going to happen to him if he's going to put his hand and shoulders next to the ear? Put it like this. Look, you see? The, the elbow is going to bend and instead of swimming straight, he's going to push here and the body is going to move and all of the lower back is going to feel pain. So you can come back. So, so it's pretty easy to understand when you swim backstroke. What you have to do is just lift your hand, feel the pain, feel the pain, put your hand a little bit down and now you have to swim because we want to strengthen the muscles but we don't want uh, to feel pain in the shoulders. And another thing, Wes talks about these two amazing things. We talk about the neck and we talk about the lower back. And if the hand is here and we push here, the body moves and we look at each person as if he, as if he have a herniated disc in the neck and lower back. So people or Olympic swimmers put the hand here. They can grab the water pretty hard, but for most people it's not right. It's not only not right, it's not going to be fast because your body is going to move like a snake. And if you stretch the hand according to your flexibility level or according to your flexibility west level, you're going to glide and elongate the lower back. So when shouldn't we swim backstroke? Some doctors uh, tell people and they come to me and they tell me, Ori, we need to uh, swim backstroke and not freestyle. So when shouldn't we swim uh, backstroke and what's the problem? Some swimmers sink in the water, but not only that, they sink, they have these strong muscles or very tense in the lower back and what happens if this is the body and this is the head, the legs sink and that's part of the painful area. So the legs sink and we don't want them to sink, so what do we do? We kick, yeah, very good. We kick with the legs. And when we kick strongly with the legs, like this, with an arch in the body, it's very, very, very painful. So we can do this, we can bend uh, front, but it's not good to bend on the back. So only if your legs really, really sink, you can work first with fins and backstroke, don't lose the backstroke, or elongate your muscles and then they're going to float better. But if they still sink, really sink, swim freestyle and then go back to back to work, uh, backstroke as well. Why is it so amazing? Because in this uh, crazy world, we're all the time like this. You know the feeling, right? All the time like this or this. <laughs> And all the time we're stressed with the shoulder down and we're in front of the computer. The backstroke is pretty amazing because it's the only style that we stretch the hand. And why is it so important to open our lungs? 
when we stretch we like this in backstroke we stretch the meridian um, lung meridian which means we open the lungs and we stretch the hand and instead of being like this we open the body which is very good for our stress so swim backstroke and I want to talk about another last thing which is very important is timing our breathing we talked about in freestyle how to control and if to put bubbles uh, from the nose mouth or put the air inside when swimming backstroke of course uh, there is uh, for every man or woman needs to breathe a little bit different and if you float just breathe exactly like freestyle but when we swim backstroke and we sink or we are not sure if we sink or not the most important thing is to inhale in one hand and the other hand exhale and I'll tell you why so one hand inhale the second hand exhale inhale and you can exhale from the nose So when we swim backstroke and we exhale and hit inhale in another hand, the lungs are all the time going to be wide. And when the lungs are going to be wide, we have air all the time and then we float better. Because if we don't float and we swim one hand after the other, the body just goes ups and downs and you're going to see it when we swim backstroke that probably your body is going to go uh, up and down and only with stretching the hand according to your waist level gliding like this a little bit dragging the legs like we did in freestyle and timing our breathing you're going to float much better in backstroke and the most important thing you're going to uh, protect the neck and the lower back and make this uh, huge and amazing uh, shock absorber to life because your body is going to be elongated especially in the lower back so I hope uh, you like this um, backstroke and now we're going to learn butterfly